What do you think African men like? Black people? Mm-hmm. Why does bust the hips? Bust the hips? <laughs> I've never heard anything like bust the hips. Okay, another one. That's one. Wise guy, eh? Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Naninga Koe. Thank you so much for joining me today again. Um, so if you've never seen my face before, Welcome, welcome to my channel. This is my channel. It's a beauty channel. Okay. A fashion Today we're going to channel. talk about African uh, beauty standards. Yes, African beauty standards. I know that a lot of people out there might think that Africa doesn't have beauty standards, but we do have Af uh, beauty standards. And if you're a fellow Kenyan like me, you know that our beauty standards are a bit harsh on us because they really want us to change who we are. But I guess that's like almost all beauty standards in the world right now. They are influenced by very many things, by what we see on the media, by what um, we see on social media, how we see celebrities. So today we're going to discuss African beauty standards. Yes, and if you're sensitive, if you know you're a sensitive person, kindly click away from this video before you bring any negative energy here. <laughs> Because we are going to get real. Real. Ah. Real Kabisa. Yes. So welcome to my channel and let's just discuss the African. So beauty basically, standards. like any other beauty standards in the world, African beauty standards usually affect women, definitely. Uh, like men have it easy generally when it comes to beauty. Uh, and uh, yeah, unlucky us. So Today we are only going to discuss the physical beauty standards. No brains, no character, no nothing. Just the physical standards that African men expect of us. Yes, what African men ex expect of us. Yeah, in case you're wondering how I achieved this makeup look, I'm going to link it up above so that you can also look as fabulous as I look. If you'll see in that video, I was not looking fabulous at all. Of course, I was happy to be who I am, but I was just plain old me before I made this little hair. So in case you're curious about this makeup look and this hair, I'm going to link it up there. So make sure that you watch that. Just in case you're watching and you're not from the African continent. I know my fellow Africans, we know how Africa is. We are not ignorant about our own continent. But in case you're not from Africa and you're just curious, like... Africa has so many different cultures, so many different tribes. We have 54 countries, you can imagine. So these standards are not the same for everybody. I can't say that each and every, like any other beauty standards, they don't account for 100% of what all men think. No, Africa has uh, very many cultures that are influenced by their tribes, their nationalities, their religion. So... All these standards don't cut across everybody, but I'm just talking about the, the items that cut across the vast majority of African nations, like Kenya, <laughs> where I'm from. Like, especially Kenya, these standards will mostly touch on Kenya and probably East Africa because I know, like, most East African countries are similar. And probably West Africa also. Generally, they, they are just, yeah, they'll cut across all over because I think even North Africa, they still feel the same about this kind of thing. Let's start with the face. And as I said, if you're sensitive, kindly, <laughs> kindly, you can leave before you leave a mean comment down below. Before you leave a mean comment, you can always leave the video. But don't leave, don't leave my friends, don't leave the video because some juicy stuff is coming. Eh? So we're going to start with the face. The first beauty standard about African faces. Yes, as you know, our genetics automatically make us have dark skin, right? <laughs> but guess what? African men don't want this dark skin, no. They don't want it. They don't. And as I said, if you're sensitive, just leave the channel. Now, 
if you want to know that uh, African men don't want dark skin, skin bleaching and skin lightening is very rampant in Africa. From people taking uh, banned products that have mercury, some countries still allow these skin bleaching creams by the way. Go to Congo, you, you'll get yourself a cream. <laughs> you'll get yourself a cream. Go to Uganda, you'll get yourself a cream made of mercury by the way. So skin bleaching is very, very rampant, which means that our men, if presented with a beautiful dark-skinned girl and a wonderfully light-skinned girl, <laughs> will gravitate towards this one. This one here, this is the one that our men will always gravitate towards. So... I'm not lying. <laughs> I'm not lying. I'm not that one. I'm not lying. <laughs> and if I've lied, please tell me in the comment section. But as far as I know, skin bleaching and uh, skin lightening is still very rampant in Africa, which means that that is what our men prefer. So it's unfortunate. It is sad. It is sad. But that is the beauty standard when it comes to complexion complexion in fact when african men look at the face they mostly look at complexion they don't even look at the features you might as well have no lips you might as well have the largest nose in the world or the tiniest nose in the world they won't care for as long as your complexion is heading towards a white <laughs> yeah so basically um when it comes to noses, we are still talking about the face. When it comes to noses, I believe that African men also have a preference because uh, I think they also prefer slim noses. And the reason I'm saying this, before you come at me in the comment section, the reason I'm saying they do prefer slim noses is when you go to TikTok and see any walls there or when you go to any social media about beauty in Africa, they are always talking about Eritreans ethiopians and how beautiful they are and the main reason for this actually is their face yes and also their hair but we're not going to talk about that now not now the hair is later so when it comes to their face when you look at an ethiopian face and an eritrean face their noses are slim like that's the defining feature their lips are still plump like normal african sub-saharan african person but their noses are slender, which tells you that there is something. Because most African men, if you ask them the most beautiful African nation, they'll automatically tell you Eritrea, Ethiopia, Somalia, Djibouti. Yeah, so now they, they are, those people are, are dark. They are slightly darker than um, North Africans, but their noses are like really sharp. Like sharp. I'm going to insert a peak of Ethiopian girls, you see. Their noses are sharp. So... I guess that is a preference, but I guess it's not in all African nations. As I said, African men generally, they look at complexion. Like that's what they look at in the face. I'm telling you the truth. You can look like, I don't know. You can have the most, what is considered unproportional. Though I don't believe, personally, I don't believe there's anything like unproportional in human beings. We were all designed to be unique. Otherwise, if we all looked the same, there's nothing fun about that. So... Uh, what is considered, even if somebody looks <laughs> what is considered unproportional, but their face is, you know, light-skinned, an African man is gonna go there. <laughs> so basically, facial features are not really something they look at. They look more at complexion when it comes to the face. Yeah. But, as I said, subconsciously, I guess they also prefer slim noses. When it comes to lips, they care less. <laughs> Whether they are fat, thin, wide, long, if there's such a thing as long lips, they care less about that. What they care about is this skin color. Well, it might stem from the fact that, um, you know, when the colonialists came to Africa, they made sure that we hate everything about ourselves. So it might stem from that fact, but I don't know why. But that is the African beauty standard. Light is preferred to dark, so that's yeah, the first so much time. about the face. But I asked.
asked my fiance what he had and you heard from that clip he said he likes black <laughs> lips <laughs> black lips <laughs> what i know about black lips is like when somebody bleaches themselves and becomes lighter than their normal tone especially when they're using bleaching creams their lips usually remain black so <laughs> i don't know if that's what he meant but yeah black lips is a thing so the next thing before we leave the head, before we leave our head, hmm, is hair. <laughs> honest here when it comes to african men i know african women are trying to like free from themselves from like sorry about the noises that's my son likes making a lot of noise especially when i'm filming i think he normally wonders why am i talking to myself but um hair basically hair that's a touchy topic good thing we are not second class citizens in africa no we are still our own first class citizens in our own countries but women are liberating themselves from the bondage of um you know western hair ideals beautiful but i don't touch on anybody <laughs> this is a touchy topic i'm just trying to circumnavigate around it but hair yeah, let's let's just be honest if you're to put a person with like um dreadlocks a lady with dreadlocks a lady with an afro and a lady with a hundred percent Peruvian or Colombian human hair, 26 inches falling on her back in front of an African man and lock them up in a room. I can guarantee you <laughs> the a hundred percent Peruvian human hair wig is going to win. Yes. That's the truth, by the way. Like, I mean, we can say that this hairstyle, like the one I have, is cute and all, and it's unique. They'll, they'll use different terms. They'll be like, it's unique, or you look different, or you look nice, or you look uh, sophisticated. But when you put on the Peruvian wig, they'll be like, oh my God, oh my God, you look amazing. Like... The Peruvian wig still wins, the Colombian hairs still win, the Indian hairs still win. So um, that's just the African beauty standard. Otherwise, wigs would not be big business in Africa. I'm telling you, wigs are now big business. If you want to be a millionaire, in fact, I hear one of the strategies Tanzania did to like raise their revenue was actually like shoot the price of wigs, like importation. They put us a tax attacks for wigs like they they raised it to the roof because <laughs> man we are importing wigs more than food hey that's not even a lie like women are importing wigs more than food ask the owners of this <sighs> let's not go there like if you own a wig company in africa man you're going to be a millionaire unless you're just dumb like you misspend your money and you're like not good at business like seriously so these businesses would not be there if africans did not like straight sleek long hair they would not be there personally i wear wigs for like protective styling and also because my hair is the hardest you people talk about i only see youtube videos showcasing for c hair <laughs> with a comb passing through like gel eh? as if it's been gelled Hey, I'm telling you, even when I apply gel on this hair, that comb is going to like. So, yeah, so basically, I mean, personally, as a person, I just, I mean, I at this point in my life, thank God I've passed that point where I really don't care what uh, people say about my hair or anything of the sort but i do like wigs because they are convenient like for combing and all and i guess very many african women are wearing wigs for convenience but i'm telling you the truth in africa right now if you go for a job interview okay unless you go to a multinational organization or something of the sort but if you just go to a normal 
African business, a Kenyan business, a Ugandan business, a Tanzanian business, what, a Nigerian or whatever, whatever, with your Afro hair like this and there's someone else with a sleek Peruvian wig and you're going for the same job interview, the sleek Peruvian wig is going to win. The Colombian wig is going to win. Don't you dare go for an interview in Africa with your natural hair combed in like an Afro. An interview, maybe to work, to work you're allowed, yeah, but for, for an, an interview. interview. Oh, you're gonna fail that interview. So that just tells us our beauty standards are still archaic and they need to change. Yeah, so the hair, we've cleared that, like seriously. <laughs> that one, as in don't go for an interview with your natural hair, unless you're an uh, Ethiopia. Of course not everyone in Africa. Eh, eh, eh. Before you come at me in the comment section, not everyone in Africa has 4C hair. That's one thing. And I think I said that not all these standards apply to anybody. I mean, if you have uh, Algerian hair, Moroccan hair, Ethiopian hair, comb it and go for that interview. But if you know you're a Bantu, a Nilot, Sudan, <laughs> Zimbabwean, unless you're colored in South Africa, oh, honey, maybe South Africa is liberal, but <laughs> the rest of us here, I'm just imagining if I had ever gone for an interview with my natural hair, what would have happened? <laughs> Let's not go there. Now, height. What do African men like? Yes, beauty standards. We are talking about beauty standards. It's really a wide topic. You guys are going to excuse me, but I had fun researching on this. Height. A lot of Africans are not really tall, shockingly. Uh, but... Uh, Funny enough, there are certain countries that have extremely tall people and some have extremely short people, like extremely, I'm talking extremely, like Sudan has ex South correction, <laughs> I even forgot to mention there's two Sudans, there's South Sudan and then there's Sudan, so South Sudan has very, very tall people who are nylons, who are very dark. And their standard of beauty, I think, is completely different because they like dark people, they like um, tall girls, and yeah, they are tall. Like, the average Sudanese is six feet tall, and I'm talking about the average, like, if you're below six feet, you're short. That's a fact, baby, you're short. But generally speaking, the rest of Africa, the men prefer short women, short, shorter than them. No model lookalikes. Baby, I'm 5 foot 11, so I know I've had it rough in Africa. <laughs> Walking like a giant. In some countries like Kenya, like 5 foot 11 for a chick is like abnormal. Like, you're abnormal. Like, you are abnormal. Lucky for me, I came from a very tall family. Everyone in our family is tall. My mom is 5'11", my like 6 feet, because he's really old now, so he shrank tall. But my sisters are like 5'10", 5'11". Six, my brothers are like six feet. So I come from a so, tall family. I didn't so. get it that rough because I was already confident about my height. But I'm telling you, African men like short women, like shorter than them. The men are also short, but like shorter than them. If you know what I mean. Like they don't like like, oh my god, she looks like a model. Let me date her. No, no, there's no such thing. <laughs> If you're tall, good luck. Good luck dating in Africa. But they like short girls. That's their beauty standard. You find even a guy who's like six foot four. Like the girlfriend is like five foot two. Or five foot three. Or five foot four at most. <laughs> yeah, so basically short is in in Africa. Uh, we're heading to the juicy part. The behind, you know, we have to talk about the behind. I don't want to like be crude in this channel. Like it's not good to just talk. But, but, butts are big. Like in Africa, butts are big. I'm not going to lie. Like butts are big. Like the kind of butts people are going to get through a lot of money in the US. They are all over the place in Africa. Like let nobody lie to you that people are starving in Africa. I live in the village. And people have big butts. So, yeah. So, butts are big. And men like big butts. Ah. I hope 
the word but is not like censored in YouTube. I don't know, but it's the truth. We are talking the truth here about beauty standards. Me, again, I don't meet that criteria. <laughs> I don't meet that criteria. So, but basically in order for you to be considered hot, and you know, I'm sure you're wondering where are my sources? What sources am I getting this from? You just have to open your eyes wide, see the kind of people like uh, who are hired for advertising products on your TVs in Africa, the kind of people who are newscasters, or the kind of people who are <laughs> like what they consider beautiful is a bigger bat. Like that's just it, like a bigger bat. I think you can even get away with a small bust, but have a big bat. Like I think if they're, you're there to put somebody with a big bust. No ass whatsoever, and somebody with a big behind and no bust, they'll probably pick the big behind. Yeah, like, the, the Nicki Minaj figure really sells in Africa, like, hot cake, like, sugar, like, man, big butts, like, that is just the African beauty standards. You don't have a butt, you're not beautiful, period. Doesn't matter whether you're, like, gorgeous, drop dead, mm-mm. Don't have a bat, nobody is going to take a look at you. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm being too harsh, but like, yeah, you won't be considered beautiful. Okay, boobs. I guess it's just normal for all men to like big boobs all over the world. So the bigger, the better. But it's not so much like the bat. Like, the bat is really important, yeah. So, but mainly, in general, you have to be light skin, short, small waist, Big butt, uh, long hair, mm -hmm. long hair, and uh, yeah, those are the main beauty standards in Africa. Long hair, light skin, big butt, small waist, big basically. But the African men like it big. They like they like big. It's like. They don't like skinny people. Bones showing, bones showing like this, honestly. Like, I've had so much hate because of this bones showing from everybody. Like, oh my God, you've become so thin. Oh my God, what's stressing you? Oh my God, you're dying of HIV. Oh my God, oh, you have diabetes. Oh my God, oh my God. All the time. Like, basically, this, this, this is not beauty standard whatsoever. This, mm -mm. my height, mm -mm. but... It's good to just review these things and it was fun researching yeah so generally in africa the bigger the better go to countries like nigeria people are big and that's how the men like it like they like big 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 everything like big butt big boobs big every like you're big like they like it big if you're a big person anywhere in the world believe you me if you come to africa i you'll be hot cake like Ooh, they like big they like like when they see a chick moving like she takes one step she's shaking like another step shaking another step shaking if you look like a flagpole like me i'm sorry honey stay in your continent if you're thinking about getting a big black man <laughs> stay in your continent if you're a flagpole you won't get any attention but if you're big like big like you look like you can move you can carry the guy up ah your hot cake you're good i mean i'm not lying your hot cake Konda, they'll be like hey my mother-in-law will be so happy to meet you so yeah but anyway guys <laughs> anyway guys this video was just for fun I believe that everybody, these are my sentiments now, not what the men in Africa like, but I believe that everybody is beautifully and uniquely made. Unfortunately, in the world right now, we are all trying to look the same. We are all going to the same plastic surgeon doctor that a celebrity goes to so that we can get the nose of that celebrity. We have to look different so that we can appreciate each other. Otherwise, doesn't make any sense. So appreciate who you are, be unique, be different, be happy with yourself, everybody was made uniquely, and uh, I'll see you in my next video, if you haven't yet subscribed, it's down there, anyway, 
thank you so much guys for watching i'll see you in my next video stay safe stay well be blessed and bye